How's everyone doing today? I have a Blu-ray collection update with seven pickups right here. And if you've seen any of these, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one of these is your favorite. Leave me those comments down below. I've got some 4K titles in here, one DVD uh, that's a TV show. Let me know what your favorite TV show that's on currently is. For me, it has to be Yellowstone. I love the heck out of that one with Kelly Riley and Kevin Costner. Uh, I can't say enough great things about that one, especially if you're into like the Western genre, I would highly recommend Yellowstone. Just great drama as well. Uh, and first up though is Juice on 4K. And now I can get rid of the old Blu-ray, which I you know recently upgraded from the DVD. And all the same special features are ported over for the new 4K release uh, right here. And uh, this is directed by uh, Ernest uh, R. Dickerson, and this was his directorial debut. He uh, worked as a cinematographer on uh, Do the Right Thing and Malcolm X, uh, but he also directed uh, Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight, which I really enjoy. Surviving the Game with Ice-T, Rucker Hauer, and Gary Busey, which I would love to see that get a Blu-ray release. Uh, and Bones with Snoop Dogg, which got a uh, Blu-ray release not too long ago. Uh, but this is an amazing film. Uh, Tupac in here. Uh, great cast all the way around. Omar Epps, Queen Latifah, Samuel Jackson has a small uh, cameo in here. And uh, I would love to see Above the Rim get a Blu-ray release. I'm shocked that it doesn't have a Blu-ray release still. There's a bunch of other ones that still deserve Blu-ray releases. Another one that I talk about all the time uh, is uh, Rebound, The Legend of Earl the Goat Manigault with Don Cheadle. Love that movie so much. Uh, but so happy to get this one on 4K. I can't wait to check it out. There was a Steelbook version for this as well. I think it's an Amazon exclusive uh, I'm tempted to get it, but I'm trying to get away from getting Steelbooks, but it looks beautiful. I feel like, you know, I've been trying to get away from Steelbooks, and then so many amazing Steelbooks have been coming out. Uh, this is a, a Paramount release, and uh, I'm going to be checking this one out to see how the transfer is. But again, all the same special features from the previous release right here. Uh, yeah, nothing new uh, special feature-wise, but an excellent film. You've got the juice now. Great soundtrack in here, too. Uh, great performances. Uh, Bishop, Steele, uh, Raheem. Uh, just the whole cast. Uh, I remember just growing up on this one, watching it so many times. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to revisit this one in 4K. Uh, one that I loved growing up and super excited to see that get the 4K treatment. I'm actually surprised to see that get the 4K treatment. But we're seeing a lot of uh, films getting the 4K treatment now. And I remember a few years ago, people were saying, oh, it's 4K is not going to last. And it's gotten even bigger than uh, even I expected. Uh, next up is Dune. This is the recent one from uh, Denise Villeneuve. Uh, let me know what your favorite Denise Villeneuve movie is. Uh, one that I think is underrated, I talk about all the time, is Polytechnic. It's a sensitive subject matter, but it is amazing. The way that it's shot, the perspective, uh, to be shot in black and white as well. It's one of my favorite modern black and white films, uh, along with La Haine and uh, Jim Jarmusch's Dead Man. Uh, but yeah, definitely check out Polytechnic from uh, Denise Villeneuve. Uh, one that doesn't get enough attention, definitely deserves it. Uh, now, this one right here, Dune, is visually stunning, but I hate movies that aren't really a standalone movie that, you know, this one sets it up for the sequel and just kind of the, the ending just, you know, it doesn't really conclude uh, as a standalone movie, just, you know, sets it up. And I hate when that happens. It, you could have a sequel, but you could still have a, a decent ending that really fits to make this a standalone movie. And that's not the case here, in my opinion. Um, I know... Uh, <laughs> There's, there was controversy with the very first one, you know, the David Lynch one. Uh, let me know if you saw the David Lynch one and what you think of that one. Uh, I want to revisit that one because I remember liking the characters a little bit more in that one. But this was, you know, more visually stunning for me. Um, I'm going to rewatch that one probably in the next couple nights. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're a fan of Denise Villeneuve, I think you'll, uh, he's an auteur. He has very, you know, specific style. I feel like that is uh, showcased here as well. A uh, great cast um, for the most part. <laughs> And uh, again, just so aesthetically appealing. It is uh, stunning to watch. And it looks amazing on 4K as well. Uh, there's an hour of bonus features on here. And uh, this is released from Warner Brothers. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this a little bit more in depth coming up soon. Because I want to compare the David Lynch one to this one and talk about that. Uh, but I remember liking the David Lynch one, uh, the, the character-wise, a little bit more. Uh, but this, the visuals here were uh, so amazing. I mean, you know... Dave Lynch one, you only had so much to work with back then compared to now. Uh, but uh, again, if you're a fan of this one, you'll definitely love the release for it. Next up, another 4K release is The Hills Have Eyes, which I have 
over there, I think, the other one. So I'm gonna get rid of the old Blu-ray and Arrow Video. I love what they're doing. One of the best companies that they're releasing, but at the same time, there's so many companies out there now. Screen Factory, you know, Blue Underground. They release a you know a 4K transfer or a new you know special edition Blu-ray, and then a year later, the 4K comes out. And it's like the same edition, just the 4K. But uh, I'm happy to see this one get the 4K treatment. It is a classic. I love it. Um, let me know what you think of this one compared to the sequel. I mean, sorry, the the remake. I actually think the sequel to me is ugh. I hated the sequel for the original one. I actually liked the sequel for the new one. I know people hate that one. Um, opinions. Uh, but I actually, I love um, the remake. Uh, I think it is gory and amazing and palpable tension. But I think I like the characters better here, again. Um, so I'm kind of torn on that one. But uh, a beautiful release. And here's the, the wraparound J card. It's pretty much the same one as uh, the previous you know, um, collector's edition, limited edition from uh, the Blu-ray set, you know, comes with the poster and everything, which is awesome. They go all out, you know, the reversible artwork, which you have on the, the 4K case as well. So you get that poster, you get a booklet, uh, which I always appreciate when they have the booklets in here, behind the scenes information and photos. And uh, so, yeah, even for this one right here, you have reversible artwork. So I think that is awesome. And then you get some of um, the poster cards and stuff like that in here. Uh, so I think that is pretty awesome too. Uh, I like seeing the different uh, artwork from different countries and stuff. Um, so very cool. But yeah, uh, I feel like I, I'm going to hold off getting certain, you know, collector's editions and Blu-ray, especially catalog title ones, because I feel like you wait a year and then they're just going to come out with the same one uh, on 4K. So I definitely love what a lot of these companies are doing, but it makes me want to hold off a bit on, um, you know, the standard Blu-rays and stuff like that. But beautiful addition for it. Arrow Video is just amazing what they do. I love what they do with their standard releases, but their box sets are just incredible. Uh, next up is Halloween Kills. Uh, I picked up the Blu-ray one for this one because it was I, I was able to find it cheap. So um, I really wasn't a fan of it. But the why would you pick it up if you're not a fan of it? Because it has an alternate ending. So I'm really curious about that. Uh, I want to you know give it another shot with that alternate ending. I'm sure it probably won't change that much. Uh, to me, this movie was a big disappointment. It's you know my second favorite in the franchise now. I always thought Halloween was the weakest franchise in the big three slasher franchises you know nightmare on elm street friday the 13th and halloween obviously subjective i get you know a lot of backlash when i say it but the sequels in this one after halloween 3 which halloween 3 i think is amazing i know it doesn't have michael myers in it season of the witch um they were going to do it differently if it was more successful where each subsequent movie would have been different characters and stuff but didn't work out that way uh but i still think it's an amazing uh halloween horror movie um uh, but yeah, after, you know, after that, they get progressively worse, in my opinion. And I actually like the Rob Zombie one. I know that gets a lot of criticism. And I know there's two different cuts for the um, Halloween 2 from Rob Zombie. So I feel like, you know, it, one of them is better than the other one. And I feel like the one that's better is kind of harder to find. Especially, I think it has a the Canadian release. It's the, uh, the theatrical versus the director's cut. Um, but yeah, to me, this is the second worst in the franchise. Some great kills in here, or a couple good really kills. Uh, the, the intro is amazing, for sure. Uh, but then after that, it's like that Geico commercial. It's just like a parody of the slash, you know, the kids on there and the Geico commercial is like, oh, what are we going to do? Let's go run in this, uh, hide in the running car. Like, no, go hide behind the wall of chainsaws. It's just laughably absurd what the uh, character's doing here. And then the whole uh, like subplot of the other escapee that was in just so ridiculous, laughably ridiculous. Uh, and then the end, he turns into the Terminator. Um, just Everything about this was just a kind of a train wreck for me outside of, uh, you know, a couple of the good uh, gore effects and kills and then the intro. Um, so I don't know what the alternate ending can do, but I was, uh, you know, kind of sucked in from that. I was like, all right, let me give it another shot. Uh, and then the slipcover for uh, the 4K and the Blu-ray are amazing. Embossing right there. Um, textured feel. Super awesome. And I know a lot of people had uh, trouble finding the Steelbooks. The same with Dune. Uh, Best Buy, a lot of them didn't have it. So... Hopefully people are able to pick it up. People are, you know, flipping it on um, eBay, Macari, and selling it for so much money. Ridiculous to me. A lot of times they'll get them back in stock. So be patient, maybe. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought of the Halloween Kills. It's very uh, divisive, polarizing. It's a love or hate it one for sure. 
Um, for me, I fall in the latter category of being super disappointed in it. I actually like the previous one for it, uh, the 2018 uh, Halloween movie, but uh, that one seemed to get a lot of criticism. So I think that one was so much better than this one. Um, I'm slightly less excited for uh, Halloween, uh, the next the Halloween ends. So I don't know, but I'm going to, of course, I'm going to watch it. We're all going to watch it. But uh, I don't know. I, I just, and then how many times do we have to hear, you know, uh, evil dies tonight? That was another thing. Holy moly. How do you not just cut it down a few of those? And then some of the characters are just so annoying in there too. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to revisit it and see uh, how the alternate ending works. You know, two different versions, theatrical and extended with alternate ending. Um, beautiful slip cover, beautiful design for the, the release for it. But and then the bonus features right here. And yeah, the Arrow video one, just so many. That's one of the things too. You know, the, the transfers, the special features, the packaging, just if you're a physical media fan, they're incredible. Um, next up is The Dry. This is a release from uh, RLJ Entertainment and IFC Films. And uh, this one really blew me away. It's an Australian film and uh, Eric Bana in here. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I like Australia. Uh, I'm always kind of fascinated, especially, you know, the outbacks and the more desolate regions and stuff like that. I've seen some really good uh, horror movies from there too. So many great horror movies. Let me know what your favorite Australian horror movie is. Uh, the Loved Ones desperately needs a Blu-ray release. Storm Warning, I think it's super underrated. Nobody really talks about that one. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones uh, out there too. Uh, but this one to me uh, was, you know, a really good surprise. Uh, it's a murder mystery. Essentially, he's a federal agent and he comes back to his uh, small town after 20 years. Uh, there was a, a murder in the town and uh, people were trying to tie him to it because they found a note uh, that he had written her to meet uh, this girl uh, at like, uh, you know, where the, the river is essentially. And that's where they found her body. Uh, but there's really no proof aside from that. But he left town and became a federal agent. He comes back into town when his other friend uh, passes away. And uh, the other friend essentially was accused of, uh, you know, killing his family and then himself. And then he kind of digs into it uh, because uh, his parents want him to. It seems like a open and closed case, but he investigates and finds out more. And he thinks maybe the two cases were connected, the one uh, from 20 years ago and then this one. And uh, some really good tension here. I like the way that it plays out. I feel like it was a missed opportunity a bit towards the end to do a little bit more and maybe tie some things together. Um, but overall, I thought it was amazing. Uh, great tension, uh, great acting, and definitely one I would recommend checking out, The Dry. And it's called The Dry because uh, I think it's, you know, almost a full year of no rain and a lot of the rivers actually dried up. Um, so that's another aspect there too. Uh, but yeah, you, you get, uh, you know, some interactions with some of the locals that hate him and uh, the back and forth there, too. Uh, so that's one of the things, too, I like the character interactions, and stuff like that. And he's working with a local detective, too. Uh, and there's all kinds of things. People have their secrets. And uh, I really enjoy the heck out of this one. Uh, so, yeah, uh, give me some more Australian film recommendations, especially horror, uh, you know, murder mystery, stuff like that, too. Thrillers. Uh, I don't know. I've always been fascinated with Australia. Uh, just everything about it started as, you know, British Penal Colony, just the Outback, uh, so, so many different crazy, you know, murder cases over there too. Uh, Wolf Creek, you know, somewhat based on a true story. They switched up certain things too. Uh, but I don't know, just the, the desolate areas, the Outback, I've always loved it. Um, but next up is The Last Broadcast. This is uh, a release from 101 Films. It's a Region B locked release, so you wouldn't need Region Free player for this one. But they are going to release this in the U.S. for, uh, you know, Region A compatible. I mean, that's one of the things Arrow Video started out as, you know, just Region B. And then they came over to the U.S. So now other companies are doing 101 Films. Uh, they're going to release the last broadcast uh, for a U.S. release uh, coming up soon. I found that out after uh, I got this one. But uh, I'm going to do an unboxing review for this one. I haven't uh, opened it yet. It's a found footage uh, horror movie uh, a year before uh, Blair Witch Project. And I honestly, I don't remember loving this one when I first checked it out, but I want to, I want to revisit it. It's a really nice release, uh, a bunch of special features on here too. Uh, and this was like uh, considered to be like the first, uh, you know, feature film to be all uh, digital, no film used. Uh, and I think that it was shot for 900 bucks. So it, you know, it, it did make a splash and it's kind of hard to believe that the Blair Witch Project didn't, you know, kind of take the idea from this 
and you know Campbell Holocaust as well they said they didn't see either I don't believe so I don't know how much uh, I buy into that it's possible but mm, I don't know I always thought the Blair Witch Project and Par Paranormal Activity for that matter were the two most overhyped horror movies in history I know they both get a lot of love they say the marketing too the marketing uh, for Blair Witch Project you gotta admit that's genius no no you don't if you thought there was a real witch living in the woods of Maryland that's what you thought uh, and if you're over the age of five I've got a bridge to sell you uh, that movie wasn't even remotely scary, and uh, the marketing, too, I, it just doesn't work for me. Um, but I know everybody loves that movie, so let me know. Am I the only one that doesn't like Bla The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity? Uh, I like some of the sequels for Paranormal Activity better than the original one. The original one is just, you know, sleepwalking and moving around and then a jump scare at the end. Uh, Blair Witch Project was just, you know, people building little stick figures and blowing snot bubbles and, and crying and yelling. Uh, and then even the, the final shot really... Uh, didn't work for me but i don't know if getting lost in the woods is a great horror movie for you then there you go uh, i actually thought the uh the sequel to the Blair Witch project was not the uh was a book of shadows not that one but the recent one that came out a few years ago i thought that was much better uh because it's the same concept essentially uh but they give you something there's a payoff uh, but last broadcast they're checking out uh the jersey devil pine barons there should be more there are a few uh, there should be more movies about the Jersey Devil, though. Um, so that's the concept here. Uh, you know, I, I like, I'm from, uh, yeah, I live in New Jersey, uh, and I like to see more New Jersey horror movies for sure. Uh, and I say this all the time, I wish there was a snowy setting Friday the 13th movie. Uh, I know there was the fan-made one from, uh, I think, Womp Stomp Films. Uh, you know, never, uh, never hike in the snow, never hike alone. There's those ones. Uh, but there should be a snowy setting Friday the 13th movie. The first one was shot in New Jersey. It snows here. And then, you know, Jason takes my hat. It snows in New York too. Make that happen. I know there was a recent uh, court case, uh, Victor Miller, uh, I think won. So he has the rights for, uh, you know, the young Jason. He, you know, he wanted to do more of that. Uh, but we'll see, you know, what happens with that franchise. Hopefully one day we'll get another uh, Friday the 13th movie uh, and maybe in the snow. Uh, I'd love to see that. But yeah, the last broadcast, I'm going to revisit this one soon, and again, I remember not loving it. Uh, I'm not the biggest, you know, found footage movie fan. Let me know what your favorite found footage movie is. I think there's some excellent ones out there. The Poughkeepsie Tapes, I think, is really underrated. Uh, for a long time, it didn't have a release, and then it got a Blu-ray release. Um, I feel like, I think there was a couple parts that were slightly changed for the Blu-ray release. I used to have an old uh, bootleg DVD for that, but uh, uh, it's still an amazing one. Uh, Wreck, uh, there's a bunch of others. Afflicted is one that I think is underrated. For found footage horror movies i really enjoyed that one and the less you know the better going in for that but there are some good ones out there but i still think uh it you know it was such a boom and so many people were making them and so many of them were subpar for me so uh let me know some uh your, your favorite found footage horror movies some ones that you would recommend maybe some ones that could change my mind a bit and the last one is billions uh drama tv show with a great cast in here uh, a lot of good supporting cast members and stuff throughout the series. There's Frank Grillo in the back. Uh, Corey Stahl, who was in The Strain, which I love the heck out of that TV show. Really good vampire uh, horror TV show that I think was underrated. Great effects in there. Uh, it got better as the series went along. Uh, to me, I think the effects were uh, right on par with some of the other great uh, horror TV shows that, of the time. Uh, but The Strigoi. Uh, so definitely check out The Strain for you know vampire uh, horror because uh, I love the heck out of that one. That deserved way more love than it got. Uh, but great cast in here. Um, Paul Giamatti, uh, Maggie Siff from uh, Sons of Anarchy. I love that show as well. Um, Damian Lewis. But again, so many other recognizable. John Malkovich was in the series. Um, Juliana Margulies in here is a guest star now. Uh, and they just started the sixth season as well. So a uh, great cast throughout all the seasons and uh, drama right here. And I'll go ahead and show you real quick. This is from uh, Showtime and Paramount. Quick unboxing. Um, here we go. Oh, the discs are a little bit misplaced right here, but you know, there you go. And then behind the discs, you get some scenes and then uh, episode guide. So I appreciate when they do that. It's something very simplistic, but it works. And it works well. Um, so simplistic design, uh, very straightforward, but uh, a great design for it. And uh, I do wish a lot of these more uh, popular uh, modern TV shows would get Blu-ray releases as well. Uh, and it's a four disc set and 11 hours and 35 minutes in here. 
Um, I don't see uh, the special features though, which is would be disappointing if there's no special features in here. Uh, I'm gonna check this out though and do a, uh, a little bit more in-depth unboxing review for this. I wanna do more unboxing reviews, so expect one for both of these for sure uh, coming up soon. And I wanna talk about uh, most of these more. Um, the dry especially, because I really enjoyed the heck out of that one. Um, and I do want to check out um, the alternate ending here and then uh, revisit uh, the David Lynch Dune. Let me know what your favorite David Lynch movie is. Uh, but there we go. Those are the, the seven pickups right there. If you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them. Uh, let me know what you've picked up recently as well, your favorite pickup the past couple weeks. Uh, yeah, and let me know what your favorite of these ones are too. Leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.